Hey guys and ladies, in this video what I'm going to do is show you my process of creating a mini ITX computer. I've been wanting to create a computer from scratch for a very long time now. Being a computer engineer major, I just felt that that was just one of those things I needed to experience and uh, know how to do if somebody ever asked me to do that. But I have, you know, had the basic experience of upgrading hard drives when I needed to, upgrading RAM, uh, exchanging DVD-ROM drives for maybe a DVD-R, RW drive, or, you know, just really the basic things. But I just never really started from scratch and built, you know, built a full computer because I never really needed to do that. So basically here what I'm going to just do is just, you know, repeat my process, show you what I went through, how I went about it. Since I did know the general components, I basically just, you know, opened up the, a Word document and I just named this uh, Custom Computer Parts. Just trying to create a little parts list so I can go, you know, say, hey, okay, one, I need a computer case, something to hold everything. Two, I'm going to need, what, a motherboard. And what I say is going to be an ITX. And I did a, a ITX, it's a mini ITX. I wanted something really small. Uh, I don't know why. I just I just like really small components now for some reason. But that's what I was after. But I was also after something that would give me the general experience of building a computer. I didn't want something that was gonna half step it, help half step it that way. So I did uh, want to get something that could really give me the basic uh, experience of building a computer from scratch. So a mini ITX would do the job. Uh, I also need a CPU, uh, central processor unit, and hopefully I can get one new, which should come with a heatsink fan. And I'm also going to need some RAM. Uh, since I, I really don't care to make like a, a, a beastly computer, uh, I was just going to go with one gigabyte, probably install Windows XP on this system. So one gigabyte was fine with me. And what else I need? I need a, uh, a hard drive. And as far as that, I'll probably get a 80 gigabyte to, if I can maybe find a good deal on eBay, get a, a decent new hard drive. So, uh, other than a hard drive, something that's optional, but it'll be a whole lot easier in my case to install the operating system. And other software I may have will be just a regular DVD-ROM drive or CD-ROM drive. Usually, uh, DVD-ROM drives are fairly cheap in a way now, so I just, you know, what the heck, just get a DVD-ROM drive. Again, not really caring to burn CDs or try to play Blu-ray on this system. It's probably going to be a really cheaply made uh, computer, but again, I just want the experience. So, okay, we got the DVD-ROM drive. Uh, what else I'm going to need? Uh, since I'm dealing with a whole lot of different electronics, I don't want to fry anything from any uh, electric dis discharge built into me, such as static. I'm going to need some type of anti-static uh, wrist drop. So, we'll just say anti-static wrist drop. Uh, let's take a C out of there. And uh, something I probably should put up here is, let's take this out. Uh, most new CPUs do have thermal compound uh, on them or on the heatsink fan, but most people I've talked to, a friend of mine, Mac, uh, uh, was telling me that it, it really is cheaply made. It's not really good, so you probably need some type of Ar Arctic Silver 5 thermal compound, and I'll show you how to use all of this stuff in a, a video. So... Here you see just really the basic general components you're going to need, except the DVD-ROM drive. Again, I have seen people install operating systems from a USB drive, but for me, I have never done that. So for me, just buying a DVD-ROM drive, popping it in there for, you know, probably like $20. I'm not sure yet, but uh, it, it'll be a whole lot easier for me. So really here you see just really general, you know, components you're going to need to get that computer up and running and to get like an operating system on it. So once I had the parts list, I can go, you know, go shop and make some of the shops that I use online to buy things will be New Egg, uh, Tiger Direct, and eBay and Amazon. Those are pretty, pretty much the only online stores I usually buy electronics from. I, I trust them. They they have enough reviews, and I've you know done business with them in the past. So in a way, going over here. I basically have everything laid out that I purchased and again I said I was going to use a mini ITX uh, case but some people start with the motherboard they, they, they um, 
shop for the motherboard first to see what type of motherboard they want then once they find the motherboard they need to find a suitable case that can fit that motherboard in my case i kind of started with the case first and then i tried to find a motherboard that could fit into that case so uh, it's really up to you how you want to do that but here i found the itx uh case this one when i purchased it cost 39 dollars uh, from Amazon so I guess it went up maybe that was a special deal but the main thing you want to do is read the reviews as well even though you may like the design of it definitely read the reviews as I can see it had really good reviews so okay that's the computer case out of the way